Hey folks, we're going to talk about how to quickly make a histogram using Microsoft Excel and Tinkerplots together. So here I am in Excel. I have a data set full of numbers. Uh, in fact, I have 129 numbers here, 130th row, including the, the title here. And what I want to do is I want to make a histogram. So if you were to highlight this, so I'm going to just click on the first one, Shift, Control, down arrow, I highlight all of my lists, scroll back up, and in Excel, if I press insert, you'll notice that there is actually no histogram button. Unfortunately, Excel doesn't have a nice way to do this. It has ways, but they're, they're, not, very, they're not very slick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, with that highlighted, copy this data with Control C, and then I'm going to go to Tinkerplots, which is right here. I've got a blank tinker plot sitting open. I'm going to drag down a table. And now I'm just going to hit paste, control V. And all that data just popped right in here. So here's all the data that I just had from the Excel document in a table in tinker plots. I can change the name of it. We'll call this my sample data. And now if I want to make a plot, I can highlight the column of data grab the plot tool, drag it into Tinkerplots. And if you've seen, seen Tinkerplots before, this is not uncommon. It just shows your data as just being a pile of numbers with no particular organization yet. To show the organization, I'm going to start by grabbing a number and just stretching it out to the side. And what Tinkerplots does is it automatically puts them in bins. So if I press the stack button, I'm now looking at a version of a histogram. So I've got these in the 4 to 7 stack. These are all in the 8 to 11 stack. These are all in the 12 to 15 stack. If I want to separate it out a bit more, I just grab one of the data points and keep dragging. Again, I've got these separated into bins. And notice that now I have more bins. So now I actually see a little bit more of the shape of the data. I can keep dragging. And eventually it will put these in bins that are singleton, so four, five, six, seven, and so on. And again, it shows me the shape of the data. Now, if I drag more, it probably won't let me because it won't separate anymore. So it absolutely depends on how you want to display the data. It is your choice as to what the bin sizes are going to be. But Tinkerplots is so simple, just drag things around and you can get a new plot. And that's it.